Bradworth, calling operations room. M for mother, landed 0426. No sign of any other aircraft about. Still no sign of B for Bertie. Over. Hello, group. Yes, they're all back now, except B for Bertie. and other operations, one of our aircraft is missing. speaking. Pilot speaking. Testing it to comms. Tom Earnshaw, second pilot. Frank Shelley, observer. Bob Ashley, wireless off. Jeff Pickman, front gunner, all correct. George Corbett, rear gunner. Thank you, sir. Group, sir. About tonight's operations. Reynolds speaking. Yes. Right. The target is Stuttgart, the Mercedes Benz Works. Will all operational crews report for briefing at 14.30? 14.30. Mail. One for you, Skipper. Thank you. One for you, Tom. Nice Halifax postmark. Mm, some letter. Halifax again. Oh, it's for my fiance. What, both of them? You've got two. Now, the other's from Dad. Surely not to future Mrs. Earnshaw. Yeah, that's a far off. It's Bittigo and Bittigo, Dad's firm. Second best Cheviots in Yorkshire. Of course, we know who's the best are. My dad. Earnshaw and son. Mm. I'm dying to see those two noble animals in the same meadow. We well, won't have to wait long. Well, here comes Corbett, singing and dancing as usual. <laughs> Billiards after lunch? Okay. You're coming on this party tonight? No, I'm an ops. Hazel says don't forget tomorrow night. Hazel Mason, the Home and Forces program. 9.40. George, what are you doing tomorrow night? Tomorrow? 9.40. Packing. No, no, no. You're listening to my wife. Home and Forces program. You can pack tonight. I'm flying tonight. Well, we didn't know you were on ops, George. 
I saw the group captain. As it's my last night, he's agreed to let me go. Sorry to have gone over your head, Skipper. Oh, that's all right. Glad to have you with us. Hey, fellas? Oh. They're honored, Sir George. Oh, by the way, I suppose Hopkins has been told about this switch. I suppose so. Not see Hopkins' face, wouldn't you, friend? Oh, poor old Hopkins. Well, a son of a gun. Oh, Hopkins. Yes, sir? Sorry, but you won't be wanted tonight. I see, sir. Bad luck, old man. Son of a gun. I don't believe it. Hey, he's pulling my leg. You're not going. Can I have your silk stockings? Oh, I suppose so. What's this? Camouflage net? Let's squall eat for a pair. They keep you warm as toast. If my girl ever finds out a letter... Just you tell her Bob Ashley wore them. She'll be as pleased as punch. Boy, I wish you could have seen that run of Welsh's. A run worthy of the great Bob Ashley himself. It had all the earmarks of an Ashley special. So it's a free kick against the Allied forces. Free kick? No look out for Welsh. Not Welsh. Not Welsh? Hear that, Len? Oh, I'd like to see anybody else take it. Of course it'll be Welsh. Compton will take the kick. This is a tense moment. The ball is on the spot. Welsh is going to kick. What did I say? Welsh is just going to take the kick. Come on, Welsh! Welsh has kicked. No, he hasn't. He's jumped over the ball. Compton's taking the kick. Compton's the man. Goal! Well shot, Compton. Well, that was a surprise. Not to me. Len, cope with the stand indicator, will you? It's stuck again. Okay, I'll fix it. How's Bertie? Perfect, sir. New coat, full stomach, Bertie's a gent. Fine. Bring the car back about four. Did they fix that oil pressure, Jimmy? Yes, it's okay now. Len, who's this new bloke? Fan of yours, sir. Wants your autograph. Says he saw you in some play or other. That's right, Mr. Shelley. I saw you in the school for scandal. You played the part of Jersey Surfer. Got a pencil? No, I'm afraid not. I'll do it for you tomorrow. Right, thanks. It was Charles, sir. Fairpath calling T for Tommy. T for Tommy. It's now 21.35. 21.35. You may take off. Checking into comms. Bob, are you there? Sergeant Ashley, answering, sir. Receiving you all right. Blasted beehive gets smaller every trip. What are you grumbling about, Sir George? You've got a carriage to yourself. Player path calling. Q for Queenie. Q for Queenie. 2137. 2137. You may take off now.
their part calling B for Bertie. B for Bertie. It is now 21.40. 21.40. Off you go. Here we come. You know, I played in Stuttgart with my club in uh, 1938. 1938? I was playing in New York. What's Stuttgart like? Oh, just like all those continental towns. In Saturday, play Sunday, Monday on the train again. Now that was Stuttgart. Well, well. Nice girls in Stuttgart and the skipper. Well, one anyway. What do you know about the girls in Stuttgart, Jeff? Oh, you know a nurse from Stuttgart. That's funny. Mine was a nurse. Was her name Liesel? No, Ilsa. What was your nurse like? Oh, she was a big blonde job. Couldn't half cook, too. She worked for a doctor in Jared's Cross. She used to sing that song, uh, I kiss your little hand, madame. I kiss your little hand, madame. That's right. And, of course, she used to sing it in German, you know. Ich kusse ihre Hand, madame. She was always singing it, I suppose, because she wasn't allowed to sing it in Germany. The composer was a Jew, I believe. What was your nurse like, Skipper? Uh, Ilsa? She was blonde, too. Was she a good cook? She was good at everything. My next nurse wasn't half so good. You seem to specialise in nurses, Skipper. Well, I did them. I was only two, you see. Oh. And you're there, Jeff. I've seen snaps about my father's album. He was with the Reparations Commission. Stuttgart was the capital of Württemberg, you know. It used to be a kingdom on its own. That's right. The biggest paper there is called the Württemberger Zeitung. Liesel used to read it to me out loud. Over Dutch coast. is right, we'll be getting some flax soon.
Your call seems all right, Frank. I travelled on that line, and I was going to Stuttgart. Mannheim on our right. John, give them some leaflets. Okie do. Ah, dead ahead. You're in the wrong end, George. Can I have a snack at the searchlight, Skipper? Okay. Squad or two. Be Tommy. All right, do another second.
bomb's gone. Transmit, sir. Mission completed. Crikey! How about it, Tom? The other engine's packed up. Bought fans all right. Hello, Bob. Intercom's working? Yes, sir. Radio's dead, though. George? Everything organized? All right, Skipper. We saw them out when we go. How about it, Bob? Completely cheap, sir. All tubes blown. How about cutting out the corners, Frank? All set. Shortest route over mites. All to court to 301, Johnny. Bob, destroy your code signals. I have, sir. They taste filthy. Speed's still dropping. Only 90 now. I'll try a steep dive. Hang on, everybody. It's no use, chaps. We'll have to stooge home on the one engine. Rachel may stall in a minute. Can I get out and push? Where are we, Frank? Over Holland, Amersworth. Can you see a railroad? I'm not sure. How about you, Tom? Yes, I think so. That's the main line from Amersworth to Hilversum. Gosh, that's all in the port engine's packing up now. Well, we'll have to jump for it, boys. George, uh, Frank, okay. Bob, yes, sir. Tom, I'm here. stand by to abandon aircraft. Stand by to abandon aircraft. So we're trying to get together or go solo? Get together. Ah. Bail out along the railroad. The skipper's the last one to leave. If he stays put and we all follow the railroad northwest, we're bound to find each other.
can you see? The sign is here. Anything else? Windows. Any soldiers? No. What's the country like? Can you see far? Yes, miles. Very flat. What did you expect? The mountains of Morn? No sign of him, eh? The Zyder Sea is no good to us. How far is it to the North Sea? About 38 miles. Well, it's not so bad. No, it's 38 miles too far in this makeup. Yes, clothes are the first thing to organize. Then there's Bob. That's well, too bad about Bob. I'd rather have been John or Frank. Oh, would you? Yeah. Well, no offense, of course. Anyone got a cigarette? I well, know I haven't. Well, you have lived abroad, Skipper, and they reckon Frank's the first class actor. Sorry, last one. The football pros used to travel in a boat with his team. Bob will get lost on his own. Well, let's face it, he is lost. We want to watch things like that. And we better keep down, too. Well, Bob might turn up yet. Well, it's three hours overdue. What a match. Now, we've wasted enough time already. John, you command in the air. There's no reason why you shouldn't command on the ground. Well, why should anyone command? Let's hope we've all got to say. That won't work. Well, I'll take John's view. Very well. What do you suggest? Well, well, the first thing we want to do is to find Bob, obviously. We can't let him down. And then, uh, well, then we make a plan of campaign. Decide what to do and what not to do. Don't you agree, Tom? Hmm. And then, uh, well, act accordingly. Very explicit. Clear as mud. Yeah, come on down. I must say, Frank. Now listen, I've been lost dozens of times. Sometimes alone, sometimes with other men, several times with the whole regiment, so I know this much. Either we separate here and now, and it's each man for himself, or we stick together, and somebody must command. Who's for separating? What are you for yourself, George? I'll put another question. Do we surrender, or do we try and get back home? Oh, well, what do you think? think? Right. Frank, you're navigator. Where are we? I'd say somewhere, somewhere here. There's Hilberton to the west, Amsterdam and the Zuyder Zee up there. Now, we want to aim at a spot somewhere south of Harlem, between Zandvoort and, and Katwijk. But there's several main roads and the whole country swarming with people. What's polder mean? Land that's been reclaimed, dikes and dams. dams. It's nearly all polder country south of Harlem. Tulip fields. They're all over now, of course. Pity about that, I like a nice tulip. Now look here, what are we going to do about our clothes? Yes, we've got to get into civvies somehow. Well, what's George doing? I'm swimming. Where? In the canal. Well, how do you know there is one? There's always a canal in Holland. The next best thing to having civilian clothes is to have none. I'm going to be a swimming Dutchman and spy out the land. Supposing you meet a real Dutchman? Well, I'll explain to him with gestures. I suppose it's a girl. You need fewer gestures. Can you speak Dutch? No. Well, I can. Well? Well enough. Diplomat's Dutch. I think you're going to be the swimming Dutchman, my lad. Shh. Somebody coming, I think. Niet bevreesd zijn. Niet rennen weg. Ik vrienden. Engels. R-A-F. 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 Royal Air Force. 
Ja, Royal Air Force. Ben jij een vriend? Ja, allebei vrienden. It's all right, he says they're friends. Well, let's get down and talk to them. I hope they don't scram before we go. Is it a party for Holland? He asked if we'd come to invade Holland. <laughs> what with? <laughs> Hello. Hello, young fella. We jumped out of our aeroplane. Failed out. One, two, three, four, five, six alley. Six disparu. Well, that's French. Well, Johnny. Over to you, over. Uh, Veloren lost aim camarade. Hier ergens. Heb je hem niet gezien? Hou your names. Willem, Maartje, Janne, Hendrik. Jan, Tom, Jeff, Frank, George. Wij gaan spelen. Veilig. Tegenop, Moffat! Tegenop, Moffat! Oh, ja, ik ben bereid. Wat is dit safety pin gag? Well, it's a sign against the Germans and Quislings. A safety pin means, um, keep together. Keep your mouth shut. Kom mee naar de boerderij, dat Els Meertens. Zij spreekt Engels. Well, there's someone at the farm who speaks English. Her name is Els... Els... Els! Els Meertens! Els Meertens! Els Meertens. Is dit een schooljuffrouw? Well, apparently she's a schoolman. Sounds a useful old bird. Is dit een invasie van Holland? No, young fellow, we have not come to invade Holland yet. I know that much Dutch already. Kind of a debate going on in there, I think. Ik zeg je, het zijn Engels. Ik heb ze horen spreken en ze dragen Engelse uniformen. Het zijn geen moffen. Het zijn Engels. Ik zeg jullie dat Engels is. Miss Mertens. I'll never put a ferret down a rabbit hole again, I know that. That's quite stuffy in here, isn't it? As if it might be a trap. I'm not so sure it isn't. There's been plenty of them in there, talking for the last half hour. What about? That's like I like to know. Suppose one of them's gone to fetch the Germans. I wouldn't put it past them. I would. Oh, you would, would you, George? Why? I've been watching the road ever since we got here. No one's left the house. Sorry, gentlemen, to have kept you waiting. I am Els Mertens, school teacher from Emoiton. How do you do, Miss Mertens? My name is John Glenn Haggard. And these... The identities of all five of you are naturally of the greatest importance to us, but I think if you don't mind, we prefer to check them for ourselves. Excuse me, Miss Mertens, but how do you propose to find out if we don't choose to tell you? I see you wear an identity bracelet. I'm sure you can tell me your friend's name. Well, can you or can't you? Of course I can. I've known him a long time. I didn't ask you how long you had known him. What is his name? He's Mr. Tom Earnshaw, our second pilot, of course. Right. You jumped out of your aeroplane. Why? Because we didn't want to crash with it. Where did it crash? It didn't. The engine picked up again after we bailed out. I don't know very much about aeroplanes. But that means you can't prove that your aircraft has crashed. Well, not exactly. It might have gone on for miles. Would it surprise you to know that so far as is known, no aircraft has crashed in West Holland during the night? Well, I suppose Bertie could have reached the sea. What do you say, John? Don't ask me. You're with us. And where are your parachutes? They buried them. All five? Five are all we know about. What do you mean by that? There were six in my crew. You are captain? Yes. Where is the sixth man? I don't know. We never found him. I see. And where did you bury your parachutes? Now look here, Miss Mertens, I've had about enough you of this. You don't know. But well, of course I know, along the railroad, where we landed. 
Can any one of you prove beyond any reasonable doubt that you are what you say you are? Well, I'll bet you could. I've never heard such a thing in my life. But, Miss, our uniform. Prove nothing. Why not? Anybody could get a uniform. If some people were anxious to find out how we would behave towards English airmen, wouldn't that be the simplest way? You mean you think we've come here to get you to give yourselves away? But we're English, miss. We wouldn't do a thing like that, would we, Frank? You're not so sure about the others. What are you trying to make me say? Of course I'm sure. What is the name of this gentleman? Go on, George. This is Frank Shelley. He's an actor. And his wife is to broadcast tonight. 940, home and forces program. Frank, yesterday afternoon, contrary to mess regulations, I saw you tearing a large piece out of the Times. You got it on you? I think that's the sort of proof Miss Mertens wants. Here you are. Broadcasting. Home and forces program. Sunday, 940. That's tonight. Hazel Mason. That's my wife. There's the date, and there's the date on the newspaper. Yes, this is yesterday's Times. Your witness. Does that satisfy you, Miss Mertens? It will do, I think. I'm going to show it to the others. You know, you're not the only one that had the doubts. Not the only one. Well, some of us thought you'd sent for the Nazis. I thought Airman had better eyesight than that. <laughs> What a girl. You say, what a girl. She certainly shot you down in flames, Tom. What did you mean by that crack about our eyes, sir? Something we've missed, of course. Something in this room. Well, let's find it. Orange Blossom. Orange Blossom? What's Orange Blossom got to do with it? That's the Orania Altar. Orange Altar. To honor Queen Wilhelmina. But why orange? You know, William of Orange. The House of Orange shows the loyal. There should be a picture of the Queen, too. There is. Quite foxy. That Alice Mertens. What a girl. All right, we heard you the first time. Gentlemen, won't you come in? Thank you. Peter Stott, your host, gentlemen. <coughs> now, beste jongens, ik zal het maar in mijn moest taal zeggen. Maar ik ben erg blij dat jullie hier gekomen bent. Met al onze vrienden hier. <laughs> en ik heet jullie daarom van harte welkom hier. Ja, ja. <coughs> Ik mijn vrienden. Uh, erg blij. Uh, ik allemaal vrienden. Uh, Bondernoeten zijn. Uh, ik heb gezegd. Goed verlof. I always thought speeches came at the end of a meal. Wouldn't mind a little bit of that ham anyway. So have them home. The two of the clubs to hand won't you sit down? Please. Thank you. This is very good of you, but aren't you short of food yourselves? Sometimes, but don't worry. We have enough for our friends. It was an NSB farker. Plan is tien geslacht. He says, don't worry, eat him. He was a quizzling pig. Wil jij een glaasje snap, Oh, Thank you. Erg lekker. Gezondheid. Very nice. We are worried about your comrade who is lost. So are we, miss. Bob's brains are in his feet. In his feet? Bob's a football player, a very good one, but not very bright. Still, it's a pity his brains are not in his head. Because if he's found, the Germans are going to look for you five. Burying the parachutes was a mistake. Freshly dug earth will be examined. Can't we send someone to dig them up again? We have already. And we will hide them, this time in a safer place. You know, young lady, you've got your head screwed on all right. Thank you. The main thing is your escape. Any ideas? Do you agree that we can escape? Others have done it, why not you? First, we must get to the sea. The sea is 58 kilometers away. And every village has its German post and every road is patrolled. First, we must get you to church. Why church? 
Our church is ten kilometers west of here at Alsa Strait. Ten kilometers nearer the North Sea. You must go with us. Excuse me, Miss Mertens. Uh, what is your church? We are Catholics. I'm chapel. Samoy. What is chapel? Independent Methodist. Baptist. Those are your English Reformed churches. That's it. But it's our only plan. If this gets back to Halifax, I shall never hear the last of it. We will dress you in Dutch clothes. Nobody will know. You don't know chapel folk. Ah. But surely your escape is the most important thing. In justifies the means, Tom. Then that's settled. Wouldn't it be safer to uh, travel at night? We'd be at the coast in three days. By our plan, you will be at the coast tonight. You will be waiting for us. You? Who's you? You're de Vries, the wife of Henrik de Vries. Oh, who's Henrik de Vries? Henrik de Vries was killed by the British in the mass air attacks on Harlem. Since then, his wife hates the British more than anything in the world. Sounds like a very good choice for a hostess. What is this, a conundrum? I never heard of we bombed Harlem. The Germans want us to believe it. So your de Vries obliges them. They like her because they believe she hates the British. That is what she wants, so everyone is happy. Oh, I see, a bit of camouflage. Yes, we have our own ways of managing things. Did you hear our motto? Die het water deert, die het water keert? No? It means the sea is a common enemy. And against a common enemy, one must unite. Do you think we Hollanders who threw the sea out of our country will let the Germans have it? Better the sea. Ah. How little cake feature? Can you all ride a bicycle? Well, I'm not much of a hand at a bike myself. I never was. We will find a way. But first, we must find you all clothes. We better keep our uniforms on. They give us a spotting chance if we're caught. Yes, you can wear your disguises over them. Well, if we're going to be pushing off, I would just like an alastor to that ham, Mother. Ham? Natürlich, Jan. Oh, uh, talking of ham, Frank, isn't this your big chance? What sort of disguise will you wear? My boy, you're going to see a series of perfect Dutch character sketches. Real little cameos. But, uh, what do we do for boots? Klompen. Klompen? Clogs. Ah, clogs. I'd like to see you walking up Halifax High Street in a pair of these, Tom. Well, you know the old Yorkshire saying, clugs to clugs in three generations. I never hoped to co-star with the great Francis Shelley in a Dutch epic. Ah, oh, George, you're doing quite well, really, quite well, but... <sighs> co-star? Really? Do you know, George, I haven't been to church since my wedding. You must have acted in church scenes. I did in a picture once. It was a spy story and we all got shot. That can happen here, too. Peter Sluis, Landwirt, ferner seinen Angehörigen und Landarbeitern, alle des römisch-katholischen Glaubens, die katholische Kirche in der Ortschaft Aut Lustrecht, äh, Lustrecht zu besuchen. Der Nächste. How am I doing? Quite well. For a beginner. on a Sunday morning. Probably going on leave.
moments have found one of your parachutes. But you dug them up again, didn't you? I thought they were safe. They are. Very safe. Then there must be another one. George. The Jerry's have found another parachute. It must be Bob's. This is Bob's parachute. Bob's parachute's found. That means Bob's safe. Not so good for us. It says the armored cars are looking for them. Else says they're searching villages. They suspect we're in the neighborhood. So long as they don't find our parachutes, we are safe enough. They'll say where they're hidden. Where are they hidden? Where are they hidden? She says that they're quite safe and that they're with us here. Ah, over. The twelfth is on Dach nach Pinkstern. Kerkediensten als op Sonntag. Om tien uur. Plechtige Googmis. Lass uns bitten. De profundis clamavia te domine, domine exaudi voce meam. Si iniquitates observaveris domine, domine quis sustinebis, Sustinuit anima mea in verbo eius, speravit anima mea in domino. Parachutes. Quia apud dominum misericordia, et copiosa apud eum redemptio. Requiem eternam dona eis domine. Ackermann, Pfarrer der jüdischen römischen katholischen Gemeinde, ferner seine Verwandten, fünf männlich, drei weiblich, die Ortschaft Finkefen. Na, denn viel Vergnügen, Herr Pfarrer! Wahr ist Cornelius Naufahrt? Wahr sind Sie Dechsel zu Jungen? Wo kann ich da bitte, Herr Jauzo? Na, mehr leistet ihr nicht. Nein. Cornelius, my young brother, always in trouble. Same in England, same everywhere. I've got a young brother, you know. A regular little devil. Oh, English boy is not as bad as Dutch. You see the school? German military post. Twenty soldiers. Boys love to thieve the sentries. They line up on the wall and think, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a German by his toe. <laughs> Mm. 
Mouse of a human fox, not even the tying cow sent and soft meal cool on the same. Marius Cathy, you need. Follow me. What are you doing at Proust? The beastie ate you laugh, it was. Yes, we didn't have real half to eat it. It's nearly put up a seat out, no strength. Now go and now you come on. Hey, let him find out. Vader, wilt u de tafel zegenen? Anna, hoort u dat? De jong... Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The young is a quizzling. I am ashamed to speak so of a man of my village, but it is true. He is a traitor, paid by the Nazis. He is always trying to persuade us to fraternize with the soldiers at the post, and now he has sent them gramophone records to play. And my son has carried them. My son. We are all trying to bore them to death, and my son carries them gramophone records. And from that traitor, the young. Hein eating for Cornelis, and hein football match. No dinner for Cornelis. Father say he must not go to the football match. Poor Cornelis, he loved the football. All the week he's been so exciting. I think something uh, very, how do you say, buried. Dug in, more than meets the eye. Yeah, very good, more than meets father's eye. Poor Cornelis, he very bad, but very cute. Yes, more than meets the eye. <laughs> A quarter, Gilda. Ah. Now, wie is dat daar? Sinds jij bent netjes spreken. A quarter gelder. Paid that quizzling by the stinking Germans. That's what my son pockets for helping to entertain German soldiers. Meneer de Jong is daar, hij vraagt naar Cornelis. De Jong. Maar zeg hem dat we, dat we visite hebben, dat we hem niet kunnen zien. Hè? Ik kan niet oh, gestoord kan worden. Niet. Maar ik heb visite, ik heb een receptie, je moet hem weg. Het spijt me dat ik lastig moet vallen. Het spijt me vreselijk. Nog wel bij zo'n geestelijke gelegenheid. Ik had Cornelis even willen spreken, burgemeester. Maar dat kan andere keer ook wel. Oh, eerwaarde. Ik zag u niet zo gauw. Hoe is het met uw familie in Loostrecht? Kent u mij nog? Ja, jou ken ik. Ik herinner onze schooldagen. Alsof het gisteren was. En is dat Jan staande? Uh, even voorstellen. Dat is mijn neef uh, Kees Jansen en dat is Julius de Jong. Zo. Dus jullie willen liever niet met me spreken? Begrijpen jullie niet wat er zou gebeuren als alle mensen in Nederland zich zo zouden aanstellen? De Duitsers willen vrienden zijn. Smakelijk eten. Girl, get out of the way. You speak English? Yes. Then don't shout. You wouldn't dare to keep me here. Yeah? <laughs> you kept. You. You. All of you. You're a British airman. The men we are looking for. Burgemeester Van Deren, you're risking your head. It's nothing to do with the Burgemeester. He'll be shot before he can prove it. Talking of shooting. You wouldn't dare fire here. Wouldn't we? The Wilhelmus! Our ransom! He comes from the post, from the Nazis! What is it, the radio? Sounds more like a gramophone to me. Idiot, Sie! Warum spielen Sie nicht gleich die Englische auch noch? Was für eine Platte ist denn das? Ein Tango, Herr Leutnant! Her damit! Vater, isn't it strange? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Perhaps it's not so strange. I don't understand. <laughs> yes, but I do. Your German friends at the post asked you to send them some gramophone records, didn't they? 
And you chose my son for the honor of carrying them, didn't you? And you gave him a quarter for doing it, didn't you? My son. Well, he changed all your records for ours. And he chose some good ones too. Trust him. All records of our national anthem. <laughs> Got all different labels, box trots, tangos, all pasted on so that the Germans wouldn't know what they were. Oh, your friends will like you now, won't they, Quisling? Here. The young the young the young the young. They won't think it's me. Why should they? Why shouldn't they? That's the point. If I was a German, I'd say the young sent some records. He didn't bring them himself. They all turned out for the Dutch anthem. Very funny joke. Let's start looking for the young. There they go, looking. With fixed bayonets. Your move, my young. They'll believe me if I tell them the truth. You'll be shot before you can prove it, my lad. You said so yourself. Shot? They can't shoot me. Can and will. Well, it really doesn't matter. Either we shoot you now or they shoot you later. Shot? I won't be shot. Father! Help me. Tell me what to do. They'll be after me if they don't find me at home. Evidently, you know your friends. You don't think they'll believe you if you tell the truth, do you? They believe everyone in Holland wants to kill them. They will shoot first and ask questions afterwards. You are a servant of God. You can't let them kill me. You expect God to help you escape. But I think you were meant to fall into our hands. Be Valentin, Bürgermeister zu Finkefeld, ferner seinen Angehörigen und Gästen, sechs männliche, drei weibliche, das Fußballspiel zu Leimulden zu besuchen. <lacht> es geht in Ordnung, Herr Bürgermeister. Achtung, Achtung! Die Besatzungsbehörden erlauben nur eine Zuschauerzahl von 200 Personen. 50 müssen den Sportplatz unverzüglich verlassen. What's he say? What's Jerry say? For years, for years, the authorities of occupation have the number in 200 of the crowd limited. 50 must the football field at once leave. He's a fine cheek ordering other people about. What would the people do, Mr. Burgermeister? What would you do in your own country? In Yorkshire, tell them to go to hell. Hmm, that would cause trouble. Hmm, would that? Many people might be killed or injured. Hmm, on both sides. In Holland, we found a new system. The 50 are ordered to go, we all go. Come along. But isn't that playing their game? Ah, you don't understand, Germans. They have orderly minds. If they say 50, they mean 50. Achtung, Achtung! Es ist ebenso verboten, den Sportplatz vollständig zu räumen. As you were, as you were, it is equally forbidden that everybody should the sports field leave, cancel the previous order and continue to enjoy the game. Please. Jerry seems a bit flustered. Now we get on with the football. There you are, you see? Dead easy. Bob Ashley. There's Bob. It is Bob. Well, I've been to get. Hooray! Here, what's the Dutch for a ray? Hurrah! Hurrah! Jo de Vries, wohnhaft zu Katweg. Ja, Sie wohnen Katweg. Oder jeder Person gestellt von der oben genannten, zwecks Requirierung von Fleisch, Gemüse, Ah, und so weiter und so weiter für die Offizierstafel in Katweg. 
Bleib müden. Genehmigt. I can see you stroll through Holland with your hands in your pockets, speaking broad English and pushing old men in canals. Well, they shouldn't have got in such a flat. Then you ran away, leaving your parachute in the canal. I thought it was time to get cracking, sir. I came back later, but I couldn't find it. You wouldn't. The Germans had it by then. Oh, did they, sir? What I don't understand is how you could find the line and walk mm. along it without Jeff spotting you. No, I don't either. Perhaps he was asleep. I certainly wasn't. Did you see a train? About 6.30? Oh, yes, sir. It overtook me. I hid. Overtook you? You were walking the wrong way, my lad. Walking into Germany instead of England. Oh? And then you met a shepherd. Whose dog naturally bit you. Yes, that's right. And then they took me to the village where, thank God, the school teacher spoke English. School teacher? What was she like? Okay. That's where I had my breakfast. And then they passed you along from hand to hand by barge and ox cart. Bicycle. And, and what have you, until you found yourself on the way to a football match and told them you were Bob Ashley. And they said good gracious. That's right. They told me that a truck was going to take me after the game to some man called Joe or something or other. Not Joe, you. It's a woman, not a man. Otherwise, you're all right. <laughs> My name is Jo de Vries. Half a minute. I smell the sea. The North Sea. as a weather eye open. Ich bin der Chauffeur vom Jo de Vries. Was haben Sie da auf dem Wagen? Drei Kälber, Herr Wache, und Gemüse. Da wollen wir selber nachsehen. Zeigen Sie mal her. Oberleutnant mm. Pudel? Hier. Sie werden morgen kein Kalbfleisch haben, wenn die Wache die Kälber nicht hier einlässt. In Ordnung, Wache! Passiert! Zu Befehl, Herr Oberleutnant! Passiert! Shut him a line about tomorrow's dinner being held up if he didn't let us get through. What happened, Mrs. De Vries? Suppose so. Willem, is alles da? Ja, my Frau. Are you there? Englishman, are you there? Yes, only six of us. When the truck stops, the driver will open the back. Get out at once. Zu Befehl! Kann ich zwei Männer haben vor das Ausleben? Natürlich, Frau de Vries. Danke. Zwei Mann! She's getting the jerrys to unload the truck for her. She's a cool customer. These Dutch girls are with her. They are that. Our girls will do just the same if they had the chance. It's schon längst hier sein sollen. Oh, in der Schwung Freikopf ist viel Zeit versaut mit den ganzen Abend. Hey, come here, runter, kleine, hey. Na, fürcht dich nicht, wirst du ein gutes Gulasch. Junge, Junge, schöne Gewicht hast du ja. Da kann man ja schlapp machen hinterher. <lacht> Thank you. 
in the other room. You are safe here. This place has good walls and floors. You can talk as much as you want to, and you can take off those things. There's a radio here. It's tuned into the BBC. Use it if you like. Only don't start dancing. Just below here is the officer's mess. I must leave you now. Got to go back the way we came and come in by the front door, or they might start thinking. Lock the door behind me, and only open it to this knock. V. Yes, V. Pretty, isn't it? Lots of pity. I never felt more like dancing in my life. Just imagine, officers mess below, jetties all over the place, and no dancing. That's charming partners, too. What time is it? 21.56. Pity, we've missed the news. What time did you say it was? 21.56. Hazel! Who? Hazel Mason, Mason Hall and Horses, Horses program. program. Oh, your wife, Frank. You know, I thought I recognized the voice. Hmm. Steady, steady. Not so fast. She's good. She's damn good. I hope your wife won't object to us undressing during our big scene. If she knew where you were, she'd twitter. Shh. All over. How was she? Not bad. Not all bad. Yes. Very good. You know, I hadn't thought about it till now, but we'll have been posted missing since this morning. As a matter of fact, I had thought of it. I don't think the others have. All well, the better for them. Still, I suppose Hazel knows about Frank by now. Well, oh, bound to. They get her to the BBC. She's on tonight. Well, I'd expect her to be off. Good blackout they got here. You know, that's funny. Them blacking out because of us. I suppose they do fly over here, eh, Frank? What, Catholic? Yes, often. Oh, it feels like the end of a long tour with a cheap supporting cast. No good looking in there for small change, my boy. You know, that's very significant. Five of these woolens are German to one British. There might be something in that after the war. The drive of Yorkshire woolens through Holland. They might go forest in a big way. Only well, don't let anybody know I said so. Well, I don't promise, because of course I never talk of anything but woolens. I can't kill myself of it. Well, what's so funny about woolens? All right, all right, don't get excited. Well, which is the word no more about? British actors or British cloth? <laughs> now, let me see you all. Proud of Fries. Uh, may I introduce... No, you may not. I shall forget your names anyway. Well, you don't mind us thanking you. No. Why did you do that? I don't know. I was thinking of my own wife. It wasn't only you. I see. Were you a diplomat before the war? No, no, Johnny's the diplomat. I'm just an actor. Of course. No Englishman would kiss a woman's hand. Except perhaps an actor. Snub or compliment? Compliment. Anyway, the way you handle those Germans taught me something about acting. It isn't so difficult. They're an unhappy people. I would rather be a Dutchman in Holland now than any German soldier. 
They want to believe that somebody is their friend. And that's a whole trick. A dangerous trick for a woman. You don't seem to think much of women. Besides, I have Louis and Willem. He was your driver. They're the only servants left, but they won't leave me. I was afraid when I first started. Just as a pilot is afraid the first time he goes solo. Then after a few minutes, when he finds he's still alive, he begins to like it. Hmm. Will you do something for me? Yes, of course. I want you to go and see my husband when you get back to England. Your husband? I'm not mad. He's in London. I'll give you his address. But we heard... I know. I spread that story myself. Nobody knows the truth. Not even my friends. But he's alive and in London. But do you ever hear from him? Five times a week. He's one of the Dutch announcers of Radio Oranje. What? Radio Orange. Oh. So you see, we're two, on both sides of the channel, who are still fighting. Well, leave it to us. Can we get cracking tonight? You may be here for days or hours. Depends on your air force. You can only get away if there's a raid. You want to get back raid or no raid? Now, look here, Mrs. DeFries, I Are don't... you in command of no, this no, party? No, no, he's just a Yorkshireman. Are you in command? No. You are. We have to get you back to England. You are not the first, and you won't be the last to leave this house for England. You'll reach the open sea in a fishing boat, and the fishing boat by a rowboat, and the rowboat through the cellar of this house, and to the cellar by a back staircase. The corridor which passes my door leads to that staircase. The corridor has two features, a sentry and a glass roof. And so? And so, if you were his commanding officer, what orders would you give him in case of an air raid? Well, tell him not to stand about gawking under a glass roof, I suppose. Exactly. During a raid, the corridor is left unguarded. Now, do you understand? Exactly. Everything is prepared. There's nothing to do now but wait. Telling me. Mania? Pardon, Mania. Our wine has been drunk by the Germans. But being a Dutch woman, I think that Dutch water is a better drink than French champagne. I'm sorry I haven't been able to give you the food I would have liked to, but we haven't very much left. I mean, not very much left to eat, but we've kept everything else. We can think and hope and fight. I give you a toast. Louis? It has been our motto since the House of Orange drove out the Spaniards 300 years ago. Je maintiendrai. It's nice to be a woman again. Even for half an hour. What do they reckon that motto of yours means then, Mum? We can take it. Well, we never. 300 years ago. We don't seem to have progressed much, do we? Come on, George. I don't know why everybody's looking at me. After all, we, we have a, a diplomat and an actor here. And I suppose it's my age. Well, my dear young lady, we can't offer you anything except our love, our gratitude, and our admiration for a brave woman in a fearless country. But we can promise you one thing. A growing help, an attack, which will sweep these Germans from... Eric! Louis, come and eat the Kelder. Put me off.
Come here, roll up. Can you hear them running for shelter? Can you understand what that means to all the occupied countries? To enslaved people having it drummed into their ears that the Germans are masters of the earth? Seeing those masters running for shelter, seeing them crouching under tables, and hearing that steady hum night after night, that noise which is oil for the burning fire in our hearts. Ich bin your de Fries. Louis! Louis, waar ben jij geweest? Hier. Zolang de Duitsers hier zijn, kon ik me niet bewegen. Goed. You can't wait for the tide to turn or for the fishing boat. These three Germans are going to be missed. What are you going to do with them? We can't leave on a spot like this. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about these Germans. We didn't invite them to our country, but we can take care of them once they're here. Louis, look. That tunnel leads to the river. Watch out for a fishing boat coming upstream with two white diamonds on the starboard side. Two white diamonds. Try and contact the fishermen. If you can't, trust to luck. The danger will be at the swing bridge at the mouth of the river. It's guarded. You may be challenged. You must use your own judgment. Now hurry. What about the course? Due west. Steer by a light you will pick up eight miles out. It's a German rescue boy for their airmen who are forced down to the sea. Keep well to the left of it and watch out for e-boats. You have your compass? Yes, I've got it here. Don't waste my corks, you'll bring the bottle. Well, God bless you. I 
suppose that's the one advantage of being old. Good luck. Bridge ahead. Da kommt sie. Also dann mach mal die Brücke los. to be when the bridge starts to close again. Stand by to cast off. And when I give the word, row.
Our luck. They don't dare use searchlights because of our traps. <laughs> Let's slow it down, Don. I'm done. Watch your course, George. We're going a bit north. You want any help, sir? You all right, George? Good. It hurt. Steer somebody. I hurt that, George. The tiller. Don't worry about that. Here. Jeff. You lie easy there. Here, pass me that sack. Oh, Lord. You're all right now, George. I can stick it till morning. I'll do all right. <laughs> Spotted us, sir. Last. They'll be here in about three minutes, I reckon. Don't mind, if this comes out, we're going to be all right. I don't want another tip to Harmon just yet. Shut the hatch. They're still jabbering, sir? Yes. They're ordering these two thumps to sit quiet for females, get ya. These are fantastic louse boobins. You couldn't show any operation. What are we going to do about Rosencrantz and Guildenstern? You two stay put. You understand? I doesn't put them, I neither. You know, you're far too cocky. You understand that, all right? Okay. <laughs> no need to have empty stomach, anyway. something from our side. Pick you up. Matter of fact, we picked up two of them. Yes? Are they your prisoners? Well, we've been arguing the toss about that ever since we got here. They were here first and radioed their chaps for help. Oh, I see their point. Technically, you're their prisoners. What, six to two? I like that. Sir? Got a bit too cocky, so they took their guns. Well, legally, that weakens your status. But don't mind me, I'm embarrassed when I'm ashore. Well, then we loosened the cable thing and uh, hope we drift. You drifted all right. Another hour with this tide running and you'll be in our own minefields. How long have you been in the pot? Oh, it's about four. We, we saw you coming, sir. We thought you was Jerry's, sir. Uh, trouble with you fellas is you can't see anything unless you're 10,000 feet up. We heard on the radio they were sending e-boats. 
When did you hear that? About ten minutes ago. Ten minutes? Well, what are we waiting for? Get your fellows aboard. One of us is wounded. We shan't be able to get him across to your boat. Yeah. I quite agree, he can't be moved. Bit old for a fire, isn't it? Well, how do you feel about it? He's our rear gunner. Yes, if it wasn't for those e-boats. Of course, you don't want to leave him. It's the wisest thing to do. We can't do that. We're all the one crew, you see. Yeah, I quite agree. Coxon! Aye, sir! Take this lobster pot in tow! Aye, sir! What about the e-boats? That's the e-boats. Next stop, Dover. That's all, Corbett. Thank you, sir. Well, George, this is the new kite. How'd you like it? Yes, that's more my size. <laughs> right. The target's Berlin.